Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I am joined by Gillian Kerr and together we go through structuring users, user groups and authorities as well as user roles. Okay, so I'm back here with Gillian. Hi Gillian. Hiya. And we're going to go through the, the structuring users, user groups and authorities uh, assignment. So this is once again is an offline assignment and it's uh, once again conceptual. So I brought you in for the, the nice concept work. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what we're going to look at is we'll look at the um, tables and then we'll actually go into these um, user roles. One of those links that you can see, um, which is an example of a template user role we've developed at Logical Outcomes as a suggestion. But for now, let's scroll down into the assignment work um, tables. And as usual, we have our worksheet and we have our example. And it's just a brief description of what this is. This is a way for you to write out uh, the different users that you will have uh, and the different roles. So you'll, you'll be doing one, one row for each role. And it's just each column is just a way to hopefully spark you to think about you, what will they be using for data capture? How will they be using data output? Um, data, what data sets will they be using? By this point, you've already created yours and so on and so forth. Um, Gillian, do you want to speak a little bit to why this is really important to, to clarify this much in detail? Yeah, the, the users um, are probably the most important thing you can do to protect the security of your data. And uh, users is where you get the biggest conflict between usability and convenience on one side and security and confidentiality on the other side. They are always in conflict because um, on, on one side, users always want to have access to the information that they want at that moment. They want to be able to do what they want to do. And if you set user permissions too narrowly, you're going to have these outraged uh, emails saying, I was not able to get into such and so, or, <laughs> or why can't I see this? And uh, there's a natural um, inclination to give everybody as much uh, permission as you possibly can because otherwise you have to deal with all these complaints. Uh, on the other side, um, giving users too many permissions is the easiest, fastest way to breach confidentiality. And they don't even have to be trying to get access. They don't even have to be trying to, to hack the system or, or uh, look where, where they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. If you have permissions, you're going to have people wandering into areas that they are not supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, user permissions are the, are the front line of your protection to make sure that a manager can't see confidential data about um, uh, clients. There is no reason that a regional manager should see any individual information about any participant, for example, even if right. they're um, managing that program. There's certainly no reason that a service provider in one program should ever see confidential information about clients in another program. Um, and uh, so you need to be really conservative on one hand to say, need to know you can't have access to this unless you you have to have it as part of your job while on the other hand saying but you know once in a while that manager is going to need to see reports that another manager is developing so he or she might need to view them but not maybe to edit them mm -hmm. and on top of that i'm just going to add because that's really great to point out um, as another level of consideration for user roles especially in dhis2 is the risk of people um, changing the system, um, making alterations intentionally or unintentionally, uh, which breaks the flow of the data. Um, maybe mm -hmm. by mistake uh, deleting data that's been entered or uh, by mistake deleting org units or data elements or uh, indicators, any of these things that can happen by accident uh, if given too much um, authority can then really kind of take apart the entire system in terms of functionality. So that's another issue as well. And and that's for sure. One thing you'll notice in DHIS2, as well as many other programs, is that uh, many users don't change the default admin password. And so DHIS2 uh, comes default with a username admin and the password admin. And you would be amazed at the number of instances where people won't bother changing the admin password. <laughs> so you can... <laughs> go in and do anything that you like just with the defaults. So that should be the first thing you do when you set up a new instance is immediately change the default password. Great. So that's, that's a really, really great uh, overview of why users are important. And, and specifically, of course, how it applies to DHIS2. Users are, um, are given one or more user roles. So 
what we've done uh, here to try to alleviate some of this craziness, and if you scroll up, Gillian, we've created five, I believe it's, it's four or five, is it we have? We have four uh, template user roles that we think are pretty, pretty much good. Um, now, you're going to have to go through and actually look at them f for yourself and how they apply to your organization, but we've tried to give you a little head start at, at the least. Uh, now, Gillian, if you just click on uh, field agents or decision makers or go to one of those pages, and we have it pre-opened, you can see what this looks like. So <laughs> it's a bit crazy. What this is, is this is a list of all of the authorities DHIS2 offers, so it's quite complex. You can see I've pulled them into different tables that are conceptually uh, coherent. So we have data element authorities table, uh, org unit table, indicator table, and then I have columns so that they're separated by private authorities, public authorities, authorities to delete and to do some management. So the idea is we've already checked off the boxes that we think are appropriate for these. For example, this is a field agent. And we do have a template page of this that you can use, which is entirely blank, unchecked, uh, that you can build your own unique user role from the ground up. But uh, this is hopefully to give you a little bit of a start, but as you can see, it is a bit overwhelming. So um, start with the table, I would suggest, and Gillian, let me know if you think this is a good idea, but to start with the table, writing informally what you think people should yeah. do, and then go yeah. here and say, well, what, what fits that? Mm -hmm. And also starting with a template that we've given you to then say, is this close enough to what we want? What do we need to add? What do we need to subtract from this template? Hopefully to give you some time uh, so you're not spending hours just looking at all these tables. Does that sound like that's, a good way to go for it? That, that, yeah, that's great. And um, so users uh, have, is it two or three different types of, of usage? Uh, the one is org units. So you can give users access to certain organization units and data sets, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other is permissions. So read, edit, and what kind of editing? Is there a, a third kind of permission? Yeah, so you, I think you're talking about um, group, user groups. And so this is this is another thing. So if, if you see, some, all these are, are authorities, which I guess you could the, the system calls them authorities, you might call them permissions. It's whether mm -hmm. they're al allowed to, for example, add or update something or delete something, like a data element or an org unit. If you're wanting to make a specific organization unit or a specific data element or a specific program viewable to only certain people, you can do that in DHIS2 by making it available to only certain user groups. And you can say this is uh, not available pri publicly which is publicly within the users of the system, but it's available privately to one or more groups. And that's why you would group users into a group. So you could say, mm -hmm. we have a lot of field agents, but we have, we have one f group of field agents that work on project A, and they're allowed to see the project A data sets, whereas mm -hmm. the other group is only allowed to see other things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a good overview. Once again, this is a conceptual thing. This is something you're going to have to apply to your own instance uh, going through. But now we're near the end of the curriculum. So hopefully you have something kind of coming together and you have an idea of what you need and who's going to be using it. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Gillian? Oh, only that this is a huge hassle to maintain. <laughs> and uh, you, you have to, when you're thinking about your system, you have to assign a couple of people, not one person, um, because you need backups in case they're on holiday mm -hmm. or unavailable, to understand this, like they have to be trained, they have to be able to manage it, and uh, who's ever managing it needs to really understand confidentiality so that they don't impulsively or just to save time, just say, okay, I'll give you permission. Uh, and so, so this is like an audit functionality. And in fact, you may need um, an audit uh, function to come through and uh, check every once in a while who is being given permissions, especially when it has anything to do with uh, sensitive client information. Great. I think that's really important and good to, good to hammer home there. Um, but in terms of the assignment, I think we've yeah. left people with enough uh, <laughs> concern yeah. about making the wrong move. So yeah. we'll, we'll leave them with taking the time to, to go through <laughs> it and, and hire whoever they need to, <laughs> to audit their security. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll end it uh, there. So thank you so much, Gillian. Thanks.
That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes, or on github.com slash logicaloutcomes. Thanks so much.